Announcement, um, announcement. So, so the agenda is... Attention! Listen up! Listen up! Hey, 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 listen up! Donald speaking. So the agenda is, we're going to um, pay tribute to our brother Chuck, who we love philosophically. What? <laughs> we don't want to know about that. But, go ahead. Yeah. but anyway, we wondered about him in the tight. So hopefully, hopefully, you can share share some stories with Chuck, which we all have. And you know, let me just start one off. <laughs> so it was a Sunday afternoon after one of the beer parties, and none of us were really feeling that great. But we were in the living room. And Chuck, you know, Chuck had a way with women, so he had arranged to bring down Janet Brubaker, that some of us know. Yeah, I remember Janet. And Janet Brubaker Some from Cedar, Cedar Crest College. Yeah. 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 And Chuck was always looking out for the rest of us, so he brought, he brought three other Cedar Crest uh, women with him. Which I thought was nice, because you know, some of us could have used these. <laughs> what about Chuck's? <laughs> so, he ignored that too. <laughs> here we are, Sunday afternoon at like 4 o'clock, and Chuck's up in the upper parking lot by Spade. And we're in the living room again, again, not up to par, but um, I believe it was Bowen, me, Walt. I'm not sure who the fourth was, but you know how the house has those little windows in the living room that look out on the parking lot? Well, as Chuck came down, all of us stood on the furniture and moved. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and we, didn't, we didn't get any dates out of it. Why? But, but boy, did we ever get laughs out of it. <laughs> so that's, that's one of my Chuck stories. Anybody? Come on. Who's got the next one? I got one. Go ahead. So back in the day, Chuck was, you know, floundering. He didn't know what he was going to do in life. So we thought we could help him along with that. So we used to have match fights. <laughs> and this is back in the day where we smoked cigarettes and other things. And, uh, <laughs> back in so the day. <laughs> That's different from the day. <laughs> so we would take a match off. And, you know, for fun, do that. So we were flaring it at each other. And one day, Chuck got one right here. And he went like this. And he got this really big blister. And he goes, I guess I'm going to be a dermatologist. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's how that all started. Wow. <laughs> that was his career. That's <laughs> his career. <laughs> Boys, come on. I, I'm uh, Dale, Dale's gone. I'll, I'll tell one that I got from Tom Crockett. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> on the way down here. We have that much time. Who <laughs> really wishes he could be here, but he, he can't. He's in, in pretty bad shape right now. Speak up. But um, he, we were playing cards one day, and um, I, I don't remember this, but, but Tom says I was there. So <laughs> we were playing cards, and uh, they were playing. We were playing guts, and um, uh, Chuck says. Uh, Tom, it's your turn to, to, uh, to deal. He said, well, I'm not going to deal until I can ask you some questions. You know, it's a typical Tom. <laughs> so um, he said, okay, fine. He goes, well, he says, Chuck, he says, when are you going to apply to medical school? He goes, well, uh, I'm applying tomorrow. And he said, where are you applying? He says, well, Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, I think is what it was. And he goes, well, are you, are you going to get in? He says, yeah, I'm going to get in tomorrow. He goes, well, how, how do you know that? He said, well, you remember when you guys laughed at me because I was caddying during the summer for, 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 for whatever? He says, yeah. He says, well, the guy I was caddying for was the president of the no. <laughs> <laughs> He said, so, so tomorrow I'm going to be in the college. <laughs> And on Friday, I'm going to be admitted to the military uh, program where they pay for your, your education. And then, and, and everybody was like Chuck. I mean, Chuck had like a 2.5. <laughs> and, and, and What's wrong with that? <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, I wish I had a beat me. He was pretty bad. So, Do you know how that that 
that came about in PCOM, Chuck got admitted like the week before classes started. Oh, really? He lived in a, in a motel for the first week of classes. Because he was like the furry last person. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I got one. All right, there we so go. I'm a freshman. Second week of my freshman year. I'm a young, naive kid. Sunday night, all of a sudden, like, all hell breaks loose. The biggest guys I've ever seen come in, rush into Daikon's room, take him, drag him out. He's yelling, <laughs> call the cops, they're going to kill me. <laughs> Say anyone calls the cops, they're gonna die. <laughs> so they drag him down to the rose garden, strapped him to, stripped him, put him up on the statue, and dumped all kind of shit all over him. Uh, I came back and I said, I will never join an animal. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I came if I talk. That's a good one. That's a good one. But you have to tell him what he did. A whoopee, what's that, shaving cream under each door and stamped on it. And, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> Anybody? So, Ned? Go so, ahead, Ned. Ned, Ned, Ned the roommate. Let's yeah, I was, I was a roommate, Chuck, uh, my senior year, his, his sophomore year. So I remember uh, in turning, you know, what he liked was uh, uh, Tommy, the Who's Tommy, uh, Moody Blues, Days of Future Past. Oh, yeah. Can somebody tell me what that means? Days of Future <laughs> 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 You're living it right now. <laughs> I think I think John knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a double <laughs> <laughs> So um, I went to uh, law school. Chuck goes to medical school, and uh, I graduate from uh, law school. Mm. And now, of course, I'm. You know, Ned, can you handle my divorce from his first wife, Susan? <laughs> what a oh, and, oh, yeah. and I said, well. Chuck, you know, it's not my specialty, what was, <laughs> what is, and, and uh, so I said, uh, as long as you and Susan work it out ahead of time, no problem, but I'm not representing one of you against the other, I, know, I knew, knew both of them, and in those days, uh, in Pennsylvania, I sound like an old guy, they didn't have no fault divorces, so you had to ha you had to show fault. One party had to uh, allege the other party had done something wrong that, that justified getting a divorce. Indignities. So, that's what it was. So it, it was called indignities. So I, you know, I'm, a, I'm research. I get some affidavits about indignities and stuff, and you say, well, uh, Christmas two years ago, uh, he called my my mother a bitch, you know, he used the word bitch, and all this ter terrible stuff. And you had to do an affidavit, and you had to actually go to court and have a hearing. So I said to them, you know, it's got to, no, no problems, no, no. okay, no problem. The, the, the day before the hearing, <laughs> Chuck calls me, and they have a dispute, and they can't work things out. Now, I'm thinking, I'm thinking back, what did I have when, when I was in, you know, law school, or out of law school? The most you could fight about was who's going to get the Beatles records. I mean, <laughs> what are you going to fight about? <laughs> and, 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 and so, you know, some of us may have gone through that time. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I can tell you from personal experience later in life, it's a little more painful. <laughs> in my personal case, it worked out great. So anyhow, we're going in, we're going to see a judge who's going to have to grant this divorce, and there's a dispute. Well, there's really nothing, I can't even remember what the dispute was, but we worked it out. But that was, that's what I still remember Chuck giving me a heart attack that I was going to have to go in and, and uh, you know, work this thing out. So that was Imagine true. That's and a good I'm one. Imagine I, I have a segue into that. There we go, Bonnie. I don't remember the year. I think it's in the 70s. Uh, I was working with Equitable. We had an office in San Francisco. So I went out to San Francisco. I was staying with a friend, and I, and I hooked up, talked to Chuck, and he was uh, working, working, uh, in the army at that point, and he was in the Presidio. So I went and had dinner with him, and I can't remember her name, his second wife. Well, before we did that, we went and jogged across the Golden Gate Bridge, came back, had dinner, had drinks, had a great time. 
stayed with him the next, I had to go to work in the morning, I met him for lunch, I said, boy, that was really nice last night, I really liked her, you know, I'm glad you guys are getting along with her, and he said, we're getting a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> so that was number one, number two. Bob's <laughs> next question was, can I have a pay for dinner? <laughs> that I don't remember. <laughs> I got, Anybody? I got something about this. There we go, Hoagie. Um, Last year, my wife and I went out to uh, Napa Valley, and we called Chuck up ahead of time and said, hey, can we come see you? We'd love to see you. And so he said, sure. So um, we went out there, we met him uh, late in the afternoon, and he said, well, why don't you guys stay, stay over? You know, he had a beautiful house. He had, actually, the, the first house he had uh, actually burned down, one of the, mm -hmm. the fires, you know, out there. And he lived on the north side of the, of the Silverado Country Club in a beautiful area. And so what he did is actually he just rebuilt his house. So we stayed over at the house and uh, he took us out to dinner. He's just a perfect host and he's just terrific. And it was great to see him. It really was. And uh, so the next day we get up early and, we, and uh, we, said, we said our goodbyes and I'm pulling up the street and I look up at the street, uh, the, the, the street name, it's Burning Tree Lane. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's, that's uh, chucking the teeth. Uh, <laughs> he just rebuilt his house and burned uh, uh, on burn That was it. But I, I want to tell you, I, he was great. I must say. That's good. Anybody? Not, not really a funny story, but somewhat poignant. No, it's okay. We'll be. Um, <laughs> we used to live across the hall from Chuck. And he was always somewhat of a close horse and always concerned about his appearance and had a great selection of ties. And I remember the first, one of the first times I was trying to tie a tie and he was like, you don't fucking tie a tie like that. So he taught me this Windsor knot, which, which I can honestly say to this day, whenever I put a tie on and tie it, I think of Chuck. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's meaningful to me only because... Sure. To this day, not that I wear ties that much anymore. And by the way, I retired yesterday. I can't help but think of Chuck to this day. That's great. Well, the two things I remember about Chuck is that that fantastic smile because he was always smiling. And he introduced me to Janet Brubaker. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute, you introduced me to Janet Brubaker. <laughs> introduced me to Janet <laughs> So that's when you got that good slot. <laughs> How come I don't know this? Boy. <laughs> Anybody else? Let's go to this door. Just one more, just, just one more. Just one more. And that was senior year. Um, we went to Duff Bar and Fourth Street. Yeah. yeah. And so we went there, oh, it was probably eight, ten of us, and got, of course, hammered. And <laughs> no. came back at 2 a.m. Chuck was um, in the room with Sue Robbins, his uh, first wife, well, his <laughs> girlfriend at that time. So uh, I think it was Bowen's idea, but you know. <laughs> 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 you, you know those uh, trash cans we had in the room? The little, you know, round trash cans. Of course, you fill them up with water. And then you knock on the door. 2 a.m., you knock on the door. Chuck opens it up. The trash can goes, water goes flowing up. All over the shine. And he comes after us with a pitching wedge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's swinging this thing like this. Of course, we were pretty fast back then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he would not happy. So, if nobody has anything else, what we're going to do, Jeffrey, is that on? Is turn around, sing a tribute. Oh, I'm not may, singing. I don't know how you're going to do this, but we're going to sing the Brotherhood song in honor of Brother Tiger. I thought we That's a Brotherhood. Why would we do this? Jeffrey, first of all, you have to turn it on. <laughs> I don't use it very often. Okay, so brothers, when Jeff's going to play as usual, he'll play one, the, probably two introductions because he has to start over again. And then we'll sing the brother. And 
And this could be a good one. <laughs> Where's the words? Where's the words? Where's the words? Listen, dude, you've been coming for like five years now. No words. 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 Jeff, didn't you practice up. this all year? <laughs> Somebody get a cell phone and give us a push. Shut up. Ready? All right, ready? We are brothers now and ever until.